Have you ever wanted an easy way of being able to make notes as you record a video to then make your life so much easier in the edit afterwards? If so, this is the video for you because I found a really great tool that does exactly that. It allows you to make notes for things like missed cuts or sections that you want to clip out for separate videos, notes really on anything while you're recording and it will take the exact time code when that moment happened and then when you come to the edit afterwards, you can import all those notes as markers and they'll be in the exact right place along the timeline, making it really easy to find those moments when they happened. So let me show you that free tool now and how it works and where you need to go to get it. So let's jump in. The first thing you're going to do is actually go over to just open a web browser and go over to this website here. It's made by these great guys at Editing Tools. So it's editing tools dot io forward slash live notes and i've been using this for podcast recordings to make notes of different sections and things that need to be cut out of the podcast i've been using it on my own videos like this where if i have a bad take i'll just hit a button and i know then in the edit skip it over but let me talk you through what you have on the page right here so you've got this big time code up at the top here that is time of day time code and the good thing is that if you're an atem mini user like i am the ATEM Mini also uses time of day time code. So if I just bring up my ATEM software control quickly, you will see if we look at the time code down here, it is pretty much the same in the hours or hours, minutes and seconds. Don't worry about the frames here for a second, but they are the same. So 19, 20, 21, they're all in sync. The reason that the uh, milliseconds here is out of sync or the frames is out of sync is because this is currently in 25 frames per second, but I'm recording in my ATEM at 50 frames per second. We can change that afterwards. So let me just show you how it works. So what we've got here is a little uh, input box here. We can see the time code ticking up. So let's say I clapped at this point. I just start to type in clap, add note, and it has recorded that as a, uh, as a moment in time that's happened with the time code that it happened. And the thing that's really nice is it actually records the time code when you first type a letter in that box. So it's not waiting for you to type out a whole sentence. So it tries to get it as near as possible to that moment where something happens. So just to prove that, I'll type a sentence at 15. So if I type, hello, I'm Alex, and then press note, we're at 20 now, but you'll see the time code is at 15 here. So it's really good. We've getting, we can build up these time code notes as they happen in time. So if I do a double clap, double clap, add a note there. And then if I just do a triple, because I'm, I'm going to do a few of these so that when it comes to the edit and I show you how it looks in the edit, you can see those markers at those moment in time. So we'll do a triple clap. And we'll type triple clap in here and add a note. Now. That's the basics of it. But there are a few things that you can customize on the page to make your life even easier as well. So if uh, the first one of these is these buttons down here. These are almost like hotkeys that you can press and you can customize them however you like. So if we go into the buttons tab up here, we can set these to whatever we want. They come default for things like VFX and sound effects. But what I tend to do with them is I might say if our vision mixer has made a miscut, for example, and we need to change that in the edit. Uh, change cut in the edit. Or something like that. So we can give that one blue. We might have maybe a talent has said something that actually we need to check with their management or we know we just need to remove. So we can say remove section. Um, remove this section, please. And we'll add another button. Maybe there's a green button here that we can press if there's an audio issue, for example. Audio, check audio issue in edit. Something along these lines. We can have these hotkey buttons here. So now at uh, 14, 14, and we'll wait to 15, we're going to have a miscut there. And then five seconds later, we're actually going to say we need to remove this section. And all of that has been recorded and take note as well. I'll do a green one here because these colors will actually be carried over to your editor as the marker colors as well. So let's say uh, if I spoke a little loud here, we've got an, <clears throat> a possible audio issue that we need to check as well. And actually that makes sense because I'm losing my voice as I speak. So 
there's not much we can do about that in the edit. But you get the idea. You are able to, this is perfect for podcasting. You're able to monitor a recording or have someone off to the side, monitor a recording and make notes as it happens. Now I use this, as I say, a lot in podcasts, even just to note down what the talkers are talking about so that we have a complete list of the subjects and things like that. And that allows us to break the podcast about, but you can do it for anything. Videos like this, where maybe if you're reading a script, you could have these buttons say, good take, bad take, all that sort of stuff. And then when it comes to the edit, it really speeds it up. So how do you get the notes out from this website into your editor? Well, that is all down to the export. Now, before I do that, I do just want to mention there is also a really great part of this, which allows you to create a team event. Right now, everything I'm doing is local to my machine. But if I had multiple people working on this production, they all wanted to add notes into the same project, you could create a team event and you'd be able to have multiple people all recording timecode notes into the same project. Really great little feature here. But let's, let's export now. So if we click this export button here, this is where we can choose how we want it and what software we're using as well. So the very simplest of form, we can actually just export all of these notes as a PDF document. But the really great thing is you can bring it into your editor as markers on a timeline as well. So for me, it's DaVinci Resolve, but it does work with, you can see here, a whole host of editors from Apple Final Cut, Adobe Premiere Pro, and also things like Avid, you can even have it as Excel spreadsheets or Google Sheets or Apple numbers. It's really cool the amount of uh, ways that you can export this data. But we're going to select DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is where I said you can train, uh, you can change the frame rate. So I was recording in 50 frames per second. You're going to want to do that. Match the frame rate that you're recording in. And we'll give it a title. So this is going to be our time code note video and then hit generate. And then we can, it takes only a few seconds and then we can hit download and we can download it to, let's just download it to there. And you can see it's just an EDL file here, ready to go into DaVinci Resolve. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna press stop recording on here and then I will show you the editing process in your editor. Over in DaVinci then, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna import the file that I just recorded. So I'm on my ATEM now, and I can just drag down this file here and create a timeline with it. And I'm actually gonna, because I rec was recording on multiple cameras, I'm actually gonna drag down another camera as well, but obviously the ATEM automatically applies the same time code to all of the angles. So if we, bring that onto the timeline. In fact, what we'll do first is create a timeline. So we'll go to, we'll just drag one of these clips down, do the easy way and create a timeline here. Now, the very first thing we're going to want to do is if we look at one of our clips that was recorded in the source viewer here and bring up the information. So up here, you just go to file up here. We want to know what the starting time code is. So we can scroll down here and you can see current frame of where our playhead is, which is at the beginning is 14070908. It's that one there. And what we want to do so that the markers line up in the right place, we want to set our timeline to start at the same time code. So if we right hand click, go to timelines here and then time starting time code and we click that, we can now put that time code in. So it's 14, zero, I want to say it was zero seven. Oh, I've forgotten it. That is one thing you might want to write it down. Uh, 14, zero seven, zero nine, zero eight. So time, starting time code, 14, zero seven, zero nine, zero eight. Okay. And now we can see here, that is the start of our timeline time code. And now we can actually look at bringing in the markers into the timeline. So to do that again, we just right hand click on our timeline up here in DaVinci. We go to timelines, import, and this option here, which is timeline markers from EDL, which is the file we downloaded from the website. So if I click that, go to my downloads folder, select that file and just click open. Now we can see if we just look here, we've got these markers on the timeline. 
and they are perfectly synced to what was happening. And we see there we've got our notes. It was a blue marker and I typed in clap uh, for some of the other ones here. It, the marker name was remove section and then we got the note there, remove that out. And you can see the actual color of the marker reflects to the buttons that we had on the website as well. So if we just jump to one of those, we can see this one says it was clap. So if I just go a little bit before, we should see a single clap there. And again, if I jump to this one where I said, hello, I'm Alex, I should hear myself saying that as I'm typing it in. This one, a double clap. So if I just jump forward a bit, there we go. There's the double clap there. So it's a really easy way of jumping to sections in a podcast or a, or a video or something like that that you're recording. And equally, we've got these other ones here as well. So we've got the buttons that we pressed for removing the section and also for audio as well. Now, one of the things that you can do to jump between these really easily, especially if you've got a long podcast, is if you just go up here in the, you're in the edit tab, but go to index and then markers, you've got all of those sections laid out with the notes there for you. And again, you can jump around the playhead just by clicking on these sections here. So it's really nice. Now, the other little tip I'm going to give is I'm going to show you a way that you can actually copy these markers onto the clip level rather than them being at the timeline. And the reason you might want to do that, if you're just doing a single recording on a podcast, you don't need, particularly need to do it. But if you're working with multiple different files, it can become useful to have them on the clip and not the timeline. The reason for that, for example, is if you're moving stuff around. So, for example, if I wanted to move this clip around here, you'll see the clip moves but the markers don't, and so they become out of sync. But if they're on the clip level, then they would move. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that because it is very easy, and I think it's worth doing. So what you need to do is go over to the first marker, which is this one here, hold down shift and click on the first marker, go to the last marker, hold that, while carrying on holding down shift, click on the last marker, and that selects all your markers for you. Then it's as simple as copy and paste. So control C, or Apple C on a Mac to copy. Then you're gonna click on the clip here in the timeline. Now the key part here is to make sure you put your playhead on the very first marker. So playhead on the first marker, then hit paste. And we can now see that they've actually been pasted onto the clip. Now one little tip here again is, you can see the, the markers have been pasted both on the video layer and the audio layer. If you didn't want that, I'm just gonna go back here. What you could do is rather than when you select this clip down here, you can hold down the alt button and that will just select the video layer rather than the audio layer as well. And then we can paste that and it only goes onto the video layer. It's up to you what you prefer. Now, once they're on the clip level, of course, we can hold down shift and then delete those from the timeline. So now all of the markers are still in the same place and they still have all the notes and everything that we expected. They still appear in the marker, but they're importantly, they're tied to the clip level and not on the timeline. So that means now if we zoom out, I can move the clip wherever I like along the timeline and the markers move with them. So this is a really easy way we could have had markers for um, clip this section out for social media or for TikTok. This might be a good se section for Instagram reels and things like that as a podcast is being recorded or any video is being recorded. And it makes it, as you can see, really easy for the editor to go and find sections, especially with this uh, sort of edit index, this market index here, they can just look at all the notes and then skip to a particular section. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of this little tool, especially as it's free down in the comments below. Make sure you show the guys from Editing Tools some love as well because it is a free tool. There is also a paid version available for iPad as well. Check it out on their website. I'll put a link for that down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos and more tutorials like this. And finally, if you need help with your setup, you can give me a little email or just click the link in the description below and on screen now that will take you over to a form on my website. Fill that in and we will get a one-to-one -one session sorted for you where we can go over all of your setup, any questions that you have, and make sure that your workflows are as efficient as possible. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.